What up though? Welcome. Today I have a special treat for you all. That's why I'm all dressed in a colorful green. We're gonna make a colorful dish. It's gonna be creamed corn with some seared scallops, deglazed with a little limoncello. And we're also gonna finish it with some crispy scallions. So, all of my ingredients are laid out, chopped and are prepped. I have, of course, fresh corn, yellow peppers, red onions, thyme, I have a roasted plebano pepper and also a red fresno pepper. We have about a cup of cut up thick applewood bacon, parmesan cheese, cream cheese, and some heavy whipping cream. I don't know if I said this, did I say time? Okay, time. And time is on our side today. So, what I have in here is corn. I already started the process of taking it off the cob. But I'm gonna do one for you all. I have this handy dandy gadget, but you can also use a knife. But um, I find this gadget to be very useful for some reason. But what I do is simply put the corn in the bowl. And what I also want other than the corn, I want the milk from the corn. And that's the liquid that lives beneath the corn kernel. And this, ooh, and that happens. But, <laughs> but this actually gets the milk. If you do not have, a handy dandy gadget you can use a knife and it comes off but to extract the meat the milk excuse me from the corn cob you have to take the back of your knife and if you see look closely you can see actually some of the juices come off sometimes corn have a lot sometimes it doesn't it's just one of those things I've had during this process I've had corn that actually didn't have milk on it at all at least it seemed like it didn't but if you look at the gadget closely you can actually see some of the milk on there so I'm gonna go ahead on and move through this pretty quickly so we can get started and if I go over the same spot twice it still just extracts more of the milk off of the corn cob Ugh. okay now I'm sure you've probably seen shows where they have all these tricks not to get the kernel all over the place. I care nothing about none of those. I'm going to go ahead and throw this away though. Boom shakalaka. Okay, here we go. So I have my skillet. I'm using a cast iron skillet. So I'm going to tell you something. I love cooking with cast iron. Probably because I saw my grandmother cooking with cast iron and my great grandmother cooking with cast iron as well as my own mother cooking with cast iron. And it took me a, a long time, but I finally managed to get a cast iron skillet out of my mom's house. <laughs> so we're cooking with it today. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna cook is our bacon. I'm gonna cook this down. It's gonna cook up into little bits but this is gonna be the foundation of our cream corn to get it all smoky. As my friend says, my friend Randy says, smoky with flavor. So we're gonna put this on our skillet. You see that smoke coming off that? That's what we want. I'm gonna add just a little olive oil to it. Cut down on some of the burn. Nothing like the smell of bacon. Mm. Oh wait, I lied. There is something better than cooking bacon. Cooking bacon and onions together. So, this is what we're doing. I first, to the skillet, I added a little bit of olive oil. 
um, before I put the bacon in, simply because I wanted the bacon just to be a little bit crispy. Then, once the bacon became al dente, I added the onions. Now, nothing smells better than bacon cooking until you add onions, and then it smells phenomenal. So, I let the onions cook down a little, and then I added the peppers. And after the peppers, I added garlic. And I didn't say that in the beginning. I used two cloves of minced garlic in this recipe. So I added it also, stirred it, added a little salt and pepper. Then I also added the corn and the poblano pepper. It's roasted, so it's kind of already cooked. So that's why I kind of added last. But we're just letting the corn cook down. I added the corn and of course the corn milk and it's kind of cooking in its own juices. So we're gonna let it cook for about 10 minutes because I want my corn still to have a little bit of a bite to it. Um, I just feel like it just adds a freshness to the dish. All right, so what we just did is added our cream cheese and our cream and Parmesan cheese. I had to pause on cream because it's so delicious, but <laughs> it's about a third cup of cream cheese and roughly about a cup of heavy cream. I added a half a cup at a time because I like to make sure it's good and incorporated. This is a pretty rich dish and of course at the end I added the Parmesan cheese and the fresh thyme. So next what we're gonna do is while our corn continues to cook on low, we're going to start searing our scallops. I simply season the scallops with salt and pepper and after they've seared, on both sides. Right before they're completely done, I deglaze the pan with a little lemon jello. It just adds a certain mm, to the dish. All right, so what I have here is a simple sea scallop. And fortunately, the <laughs> farmer's market already removed the little muscle off the side that usually is on the side of a scallop. But you definitely want to make sure that if you buy some and they still have the muscle, you remove them because they are really chewy and you do not want to digest that. So I'm going to just season this with just a little salt and pepper on both sides. I'm actually going to salt it here and pepper it in as it cooks because pepper has a tendency to burn when you um, sear. So I want to not have create that burning smell, but I do want it to be a part of the seasoning of my dish. All right, a little salt for luck. <laughs> We're gonna move over here to the stove. We're gonna add two tablespoons of butter and some extra virgin olive oil to the skillet. Um, the oil stops the butter from burning. So come on, let's go.
All right, so what I just did was sear our scallops. Um, after they're seared on both sides, I deglaze the pan with a little limoncello. I do that so that that lemon flavor kind of gets into the scallops. It just adds an extra element of flavor. And of course, my own personal favorite thing to do is add a little bit freshness back into the dish so I put a herb in it, which is thyme, and it just kind of picks up that flavor as well. So, awesome. But can you see how wonderful these look? So what I just did was with our scallions, I just fried them in a little canola oil that was at 350. And you just want them to be just a little crispy. They're, even though they're presentation, it also adds another element of flavor to your dish. And after they're finished, they'd be a little crispy. I don't know if you can hear that. And a little salt. And you kind of have some scallion chips. So we are ready to begin plating our dish. How many of you are excited? I am. Maybe because I'm hungry. Who knows? So, we have here our cream corn, which cooked perfectly. You hear the creaminess and the richness? Yes, I sang to my food. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go ahead on the plate it. Not going to sing any longer. Now, this can be served also as an appetizer. What you would do is you would just cut back on the serving of corn and maybe not as many scallops as you would add to the main dish. But today we're not about appetizers. We're all about the main course up in here. So we're going to be eating good. So I make a little bed. Yes, I made a little mess, but it's okay. We can clean it up later. And we're going to add our... right smack dab in the middle of our cream corn. Yes, the scallops look so happy. Well, put it this way, I'm happy for them. And you know, we have those delicious juices that came off of our shallots with that limoncello. We're gonna add that as well. Our beautiful garnish of scallops, shallot chips, shallot chips. Don't say scallop chips, it's shallot chips. And we're gonna just add just a little bit of them right in the top just to make it look really pretty. I don't know if any of you all are like me, but I love pretty food. And we have a little flat leaf parsley we're going to garnish our dish with. And because I love things all hot and spicy, we're going to also add some Fresno chili that I have diced up really finely to the dish. And of course, because time is running all through our dish, we're going to use a little time as well. Now, one of my favorite things I love is basil oil. One, because I love fresh herbs. As you see, I keep them all around. I even have them next to my stove with cooking. Rosemary, thyme, and basil. Those are my three favorite. Um, so with basil oil, what this is, is actually some extra virgin olive oil and Thai basil. Now, you can use regular basil, but for some reason or another, Thai basil just has more of an aroma. And I find it at the local farmers market i've never seen it in a regular grocery store so if you have a farmers market that 
ships in international goods. Definitely check there. But you can make it with regular basil. I'm just letting you know that the Thai basil just adds that aroma to it that I can't even describe it. It's indescribable. Pull in the basil, and then I use my immersion blender to kind of break up the basil as it cooks. But we're just going to use it as a simple light garnish today on our dish. And just like that, you have created a masterpiece. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel.